Well, welcome back to the second of our online assemblies in this summer term lockdown. It's really good to be seeing how many of you have been watching it um, and uh, how many have been engaging and um, sending questions in to us as well for me to answer. We'll come to that a little bit later. This term, we're looking about what the Bible says about why God's world is the way it is now. And we, last week we saw how the world is an amazing, amazing place. God's made it an amazing place because he's amazing. But it's amazing if we keep it the way that God intended. Him first, him in charge of the world. Um, us looking after the world and then the rest of the world under us. So the right order, God, then us humans, uh, and then everything else under our care, looking after the environment. God saw all he'd made and he saw it was very good. That's in the first chapter of the Bible, Genesis chapter 1. Then we ask, well, how are we meant to live in God's world? How are we meant to live? And God made our world so that actually we were meant to be all friends together. Yes, God is our king. Yes, we are over the animals. But actually, all are meant to link together in perfect harmony. We can be friends with God. We can talk with him. Even though he's our master and our king, we can talk with him. He's our loving heavenly father if we trust in him. Also, he wants us to live in our, our relationships in a way that's um, right and special, in the way that God created us to. Uh, Honouring our parents, having children in marriage, respecting one another as people God made and loved. Men and women equal but different, distinct boys and girls, all of us equal but different in our own unique ways. And God wants us to look after his world. That means that the best way to live is to obey God's commands to do some things and not do others. God wants us to, to obey his way, and that way the world works the best way it can be. If we disobey them, then things start to go wrong, as we'll think about uh, in the future weeks. But God also wants us to enjoy this great, beautiful world. He, he, he's a God of fun and laughter. He wants us to enjoy it. Enjoy the sunshine. Enjoy nature. Enjoy games. Enjoy fun. Enjoy lovely food. Enjoy films. All kinds of things God's made good, and he wants us to enjoy them. But if the world was made good and um, so amazing, why do horrible things happen? If uh, men, God made women, women, God men made men and women to marry and have children, well, why can't some couples have children? I was talking to a couple uh, the other day, and they've been trying for six years, and they, they can't have children. They really want children, but they can't. And, and why is it that some parents stop living together? It costs. It's it's so heartbreaking, isn't it? really difficult for us. Why is, is, even though some parts of life are wonderful, why are other parts such a mess? Well, we'll think about that later on this term. Today we're thinking about the best way to live is to live in God's world the way he made it, following his rules, following his order, enjoying his goodness, respecting and loving one another, just as God loves and respects us. Well, we're now going to come to our Ask Tudor section. And in a moment, I'm going to open up our uh, box here and we're going to have a look at what's in there. Well, it's time now for our Ask Tudor questions. And if you'd like your questions to appear in this section, do let your school know and they'll pass them on to me and they might appear next week or the week after the assemblies. I look forward to having them. Any questions you've got about what we're learning here or anything else, they'd be lovely to hear. So I've been I've got three questions for today. Today's question, the first question is this. Why does God make bad things happen? Why does God make bad things happen? In a few weeks' time, we'll be thinking about why the world that God made good isn't good anymore. But this question says, why did God make bad things happen? I guess I'd want to first of all change the word make to the word let. Because the Bible says God doesn't do anything wrong. He doesn't make bad things happen, but he does let them happen. And sometimes uh, there are some good reasons for that. I've got three reasons for us that might help us. First of all, God lets it happen because of consequences. Bad things happen when God's good order and his rules are broken. Actually, God made the world good, but if we go against God's ways, then things go wrong. A bit like uh, an engine. A part of it goes wrong and the whole thing then goes wrong because of it. There are consequences. Bad things happen when God's good order and his rules are broken. Secondly, correction. God lets some bad things happen to help us learn that his ways are the best. God lets some bad things happen to help us learn his ways are the best. Because if we do something that's wrong, sometimes our parents might let us do something and then we'll realise actually that was wrong and actually we'll realise the bad things come from it so we'll learn not to do it next time. 
so correction. And thirdly, compassion. Sometimes God lets bad things happen and uses those bad things. He lets some things that feel bad happen, like losing a good thing, to lead us to the best thing. And the best thing, uh, God says, is trusting in Jesus. God gives us lots of good things, but sometimes we think they're too important. Like sometimes, for instance, we might play loads on our, uh, our Xbox or our, our Wii or our PlayStation or whatever, and um, that leads us to be unkind to our parents and unhelpful to them. But actually, our relationship with them is much more important. So some bad things, God lets them happen, losing a good thing to lead us to the best thing, trusting in Jesus. So that's a few thoughts about why God lets bad things happen. Right, well, our second question is this. Last week we saw about Jesus being killed on the cross and the people, some people killed him there because they were jealous of him. And one person said to me, why, uh, wrote to me, why kill Jesus if you're jealous? Couldn't they ask him how to be powerful instead? That's a really good question. Actually, well, that person's just right. They could have asked him. It's a much better way to work with him. But some people see don't want Jesus or anyone else over them. They want to be in charge of their own lives. I guess sometimes we're like that at home, aren't we, with our parents? I want to do it my way. And that's how some people treated Jesus. Secondly, there were some people who thought Jesus was offending God. They thought, God can't be a human being, so Jesus must be pretending and, and, or, and going against God by saying that he's got God's power. And so that's why they wanted to be unkind to Jesus. I guess the best way, as the question kind of says, is let's work with Jesus and enjoy his goodness rather than going against him. So I've got a little prayer we could say. We could say, Lord Jesus, please can I share your goodness? And I guess that's a good thing if we're jealous of any of our family or friends or things. Can I share it? Can I enjoy it with you rather than have it instead of you? Well, our third question today is this. What does heaven look like? What does heaven look like? And do you know what? I don't know. We don't know yet. But in the Bible, God does give us glimpses. He shows us a little bit of what heaven is like. We know that some things that are not there. There's no fear, no anger, no tears, no sadness, no disappointment, no guilt, no loneliness, no worry, no failure and no evil. I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. Aren't I? All those things are horrible things. But in heaven, there's none of them. They're all gone because heaven is full of good things. Heaven is being together with God and together with people. It's full of love and friendship and enjoyment of God's amazingness. And, uh, and Jesus describes it a little bit like the best party ever. The best party ever. Heaven's amazing. We don't know what it looks like exactly, but we do have glimpses, a little idea. And I'm looking forward to being there. I hope you are too, as we trust in Jesus. Well, that's my Ask Tudor questions today. Why don't you... Write down any questions that you've got. Uh, ask your mum or dad or care to send them to the school to me and I'll hopefully cover them in future weeks. Right now, though, let's pray. And we're going to pray together a prayer that Jesus taught. It's called the Lord's Prayer. The words are on the screen. Please do join in if you'd like to. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. Well, why not also say a short prayer yourself? Just thank God for someone who loves you. Just to say it's your short prayer now. Well, let's get ready to sing our song now. We're going to sing the song Creator God, one we've sung in school before. Creator God, because God made everything and he's so good and his world is a brilliant place. You pop the freckles on my face And all the fish that swim and all the birds that fly Were made from your incredible imagination Create 
Thank you. 